Hello and welcome back to another episode of DCS in 10 minutes or less with the Mirage 2000. This is episode 22, which will be going over high drag bombs. Just a reminder, when using bombs, if you load your Fox 1 missile, you will not be able to use your bombs or your Fox 1. Hope you guys enjoy, let's get into it. The whole purpose for using high drag bombs is to be low and fast. Using the high drag features of the bombs, we are able to have enough separation between ourselves and the bombs to avoid the red slash fragmentation area. Too long to read, you won't die if you drop high drag bombs unless you really mess up, which you won't, because I believe in you. Minus it looking cool, using high drag bombs is not for pinpoint accuracy, but it's still accurate enough to be effective. Scenarios in which high drag bombs are useful, when you're low and fast and you can use the train to mask you from the enemy, give the enemy the smallest window to attack you due to the limitations of spotting you. The downsides, there's barely any standoff between you and the enemy, if the enemy has short range air defense, things can get spicy. As always, I'm going to start the weapons first, but before we get into what the weapons are, I just want to show the hard points that the weapons will be on. The majority of the bombs can be used on 6 hard points, with 2 additional bombs being loaded on the 7th hard point, which is the center line. So a lot of these bombs are very similar and serve the same purpose, so I will not be doing a deep dive, but I will show each type of bomb that you can use, and as always, you guys can pause and read more if you like. Okay, so the first hydrag bomb is going to be the SAMP or the SAMP hydrag variant. This uses a parachute to slow it down. This is a French made bomb and it was used until being replaced by the Mark 82 series. The Mirage could carry up to 8 of these. This is an unguided bomb so the accuracy relies on the pilot's release envelope. If released properly, 50% of the bombs will impact within 30 meters of the aim point. It has a nose and tail fuse option, just a quick breakdown between the two. A nose fuse is when the bomb impacts the surface and explodes creating a large blast area. A tail fuse is used against a hard target like a tank. The bomb will penetrate the target and then explode after entering the target. Again, this is going to go for a majority of the bombs in this video. Okay, so the next bomb is going to be the Mark 82 Snake Eye. This bomb uses high drag fins to slow it down. The Mirage can carry up to 8 of these. This is an unguided bomb, so the accuracy remains as mentioned before. It also has a nose and tail fuse. Special note, some planes in DCS can use the nose fuse option to turn a high drag bomb into a low drag bomb. This is not an option in the Mirage, so always deploy a high drag device. Okay, so this bomb is going to be the Mark 82 Air. This bomb uses a parachute to slow down. We can carry eight of these as well. Uh, this is literally a Mark 82 Snake Eye, but instead of using fins, it uses a parachute. Okay, so this is going to be our BLG 66 Beluga. This is going to be our anti tank cluster bomb. We can carry up to nine of these. Unlike a CB 97 or whatever, this does not have individual sensors on the submunitions, so this does not track individual targets. Each bomb releases 151 66 millimeter high explosives. As of now, we only have the AC variant. Not sure the other variants will come to DCS. It does have a special fuse feature that selects different release dispersions. The nose fuse will release a short pattern, which is 120 meters long and 40 meters wide. The tail fuse will release a long pattern, which is 240 meters long and 40 meters wide. And lastly, we have the BAP-100 anti-runaway bombs. These are unguided, high-drag, rocket-assisted anti-runaway bombs. We can carry up to 18 of these in the center pylon. The payload makes the crater roughly 13 feet wide and 2 feet deep, or 4 meters wide and 50 centimeters deep. We only have a nose fuse option. Uh, this covers the high drag bombs, now we're going to go over the preparation phase. Alright, so now we're in the preparation phase. Before we get started, we're going to look at the controls. So go to adjust controls, make sure I have Mirage 2000 selected. The first control is going to be weapon system command forward. This will bring up your CCIP bombing symbology in your HUD. Next will be Microb Trigger Second Stage. This is a trigger that deploys all weapons for the Mirage 2000. Okay, so now we're back in the cockpit, so we can start preparing our bombs. First, let's find out how many bombs we have on board. So we're going to go to our PPA panel, identify the test switch, we're going to left click and hold. We're going to pause the game. All right, we know BF means high drag bomb, so we have two, four, six, eight. Then, if you want, you can visually confirm as well on F2 that we have eight bombs on board. I'm going to unpause it real quick. And now we're going to go to our G limiter switch. All right, so now we're going to ensure it's in the down position, which it is. This will limit our aircraft to 6 Gs, that way we don't accidentally over G the weapons and rip them off the pylons. This will also make our controls a lot smoother for more precise flying. Whenever dealing with air to ground weapons, make sure this is in the down position. Alright, now we're going to go to the PCA panel. Okay, so now we're going to select BF, which is our high drag bomb. You're going to notice that S appears indicating that we selected it. Also now TAS and RS is now turned on automatically after selecting your bombs. 
These are two systems that gather data to give you accurate bombing solutions. So what TAS is, is the radar ranging the distance to the impact point. Uh, RS is using the aircraft's radar altimeter to gain additional information for accurate bombing. Okay, so now we're going to go to the PPA panel. This is the panel that you're going to use to set up your bombs. First, we're going to talk about the fuse switch. The down position means that the fuse are set to safe, so for whatever reason why the bomb comes off a pylon, it will not explode. Middle position is tail fuse, and top position is nose fuse. Next is going to be the bomb quantity selector switch. This is how you're going to select how many bombs you're going to drop per trigger pull. You can select up to 18 for the BAP-100, but for this example, we're going to do up to 4. The next switch is the bomb interval selection switch. This is how you're going to select the distance between bombs as they drop. You can pick by increments of 10 meters. So the max we can do is 28 for 280 meters, but we're not going to do that. For this example, we're going to do 5 for 50 meters. So just to break it down, as one bomb drops, there's going to be a 50 meter spread until the next bomb drops. All right, then we're going to select the fuse. And then for the last step, we're going to go back to our PCA panel. And then we're going to arm it. And we're good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to go over CCIP HUD symbology. So first thing you're going to do, you're going to go to your PCA panel and you can select BF. Now you're going to use HOTAS command, weapon system command forward. Pull up your CCIP symbology. First thing you're going to do, you're going to ensure that BF is on the left side of the HUD to indicate that you have high drive bomb selected. If BF is not there, go back to your PCA panel and select BF. If it's flashing like this, it's because your PCA panel's master arm is at the safe. Whenever you're ready to drop bombs, go to your PCA panel, master arm, and flip it up to arm. It'll become solid. Okay, so next is going to be the bomb release domain. This is going to show your aircraft's altitude and speed domain relative to the flight path marker. The big thing to pay attention to is when the indicator is telling you to gain altitude or drop altitude. Next is going to be your bomb fall line, which falls from the flight path marker. And then we have the last bomb indication. This shows the last bomb impact point of the salvo that you have set up. And then next is going to be the aiming reticle. Last is the weapon ready indication. If your aiming reticle has wings on it, the weapon is ready to be dropped. If there is no wings present, double check your work as it can be as simple as forgetting your master arm. Alright, so how do you aim while using the CCIP reticle? So it's actually pretty straightforward. So KISS method, keep it simple stupid. So what I do, I use the bomb fall line as my approach. So line up my target with the bomb fall line. And then actually this is a really good uh, aiming impact point for my aiming reticle if I want to attack this one tent. But say we want to attack all four of these tents right here. So obviously over in active pause, so we have this luxury. So let's go find out how big of a spread that is. So nope, not 50. So 60 meters, and that'll be right on. So first bomb will hit there, and the last bomb will hit right here. But say we're going to do all eight bombs. That's not right. So we're going to go down to three, just cut them in half. Let's go down to two. And let's go back to three. Cool. All right, let's unpause it, and then we'll do it live. I'll come back around, and we'll bomb it. So something I want to talk about is using TAS and RS on different ground surfaces. Both systems work well together, but with the low altitude you're dropping bombs at, the systems are reading the ground from a slanted angle. So in this example, we're over a runway, and you can notice that the reticle is actually bouncing around. That's because the TAS mode, which is using the radar, is getting a hard time getting a proper return. So an example, so think of shining a laser pointer, which is our radar in this example, at a patch of grass from a 45 degree angle. The chances of that laser to reflect is pretty slim. Now imagine that same scenario with the laser pointer, but now it's pointing out a mirror. In this case, the mirror is going to be the runaway, so it's going to reflect no matter what. Okay, so now if you turn off TAS and leave RS on, your aiming reticle is no longer bouncing, because our radar is no longer being used for CCIP, thus giving us better accuracy. 